Hello, I am Dr. Mohan Raut. In this video, I am going to speak about a very important topic and that is role of clinical reproductive immunology in recurrent IVF failures and something no one may tell you after IVF failures. I am a practicing gynecologist and clinical reproductive immunologist. We have our centers, Dr. Raut's Centers for Reproductive Immunology in Mumbai and in many other parts of India. At these centers, we treat couples with unexplained repeated miscarriages, recurrent IVF failures and unexplained infertility using our patented process of lymphocyte immunization therapy also called as Immulate and other immunomodulatory treatments. Very often, we encounter patients with multiple failed IVF cycles despite good quality embryos, a receptive endometrium and optimal hormonal balance. Usually, these cases are categorized as unexplained failures <clears throat> attributed to embryo quality or endometrial receptivity or simply bad luck. However, now the recent research suggests that a dysregulated immune system response could be the missing piece of this puzzle in recurrent implantation failure and recurrent pregnancy loss or RPL. So today I will discuss the immunological factors contributing to IVF failures and how integrating clinical reproductive immunology into IVF protocols can improve the patient outcomes. So if there are immunological causes of IVF failure, why are we missing them? In standard IVF practice, we assess embryo quality, endometrial thickness and even receptivity and hormonal and metabolic parameters. But yet, many patients still fail the implantation process despite all these factors being normal. Now this raises one question, are we overlooking the immune system's role in implantation? Because our immune system is designed to differentiate between self and non-self and thus protecting against infections and abnormal cells. However, in pregnancy, the maternal immune tolerance towards embryo is very crucial for successful implantation and fetal development. When this balance gets disrupted, it can result in recurrent implantation failure or RIF or biochemical pregnancies or early pregnancy losses. The four most important underdiagnosed immune related causes of IVF failure are the first one overactive immune uh, natural killer cells or second is HLA compatibility issues between uh, partners leading to lack of protective antibodies, third is cytokine imbalance and fourth is antithyroid antibodies. So first natural killer cells. It is a double-edged sword for implantation. NK cells play a crucial role in modulating trophoblast invasion and vascular remodeling in early pregnancy. However, in some women, excessive NK cell activity leads to increased cytotoxicity, impairing implantation. Clinical evidence suggests that women with elevated peripheral or uterine NK cell activity have a higher uh, incidence of the current IVF failures and pregnancy losses. Also very low NK cells also affect implantation process and vascular remodeling leading to implantation failure. Second is the NK cell. So the NK cell testing both peripheral and endometrial should be considered in these patients with multiple implantation failures. The second one is HLA compatibility and immune recognition uh, and failure of immune recognition because Every individual has a unique HLA or human leukocyte antigen profile that influences immune recognition. So if partners share similar genes, the maternal immune system may fail to recognize the embryo as semi-allogenic due to lack of protective antibodies or blocking antibodies leading to inadequate immune tolerance leading to implantation failure. So this is an overlooked but significant cause of unexplained IVF failures. So HLA cross match in couples with recurrent IVF failures can help us to identify immune compatibility issues. The third factor is the role of 
cytokines. Now, cytokine balance plays a crucial role influencing the implantation process. Raised inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha can lead to implantation failure. So, testing for TNF-alpha is also important. Fourth factor is the testing for antithyroid antibodies, both the anti-TPO and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. Now, raised antithyroid antibodies can lead to implantation failures or miscarriages. So, there is a need for integrating clinical reproductive immunology into IVF practice. But despite growing evidence, immune testing is not yet a routine part of fertility workups. Patients with unexplained RIF or RPL should undergo comprehensive immune profiling including peripheral and uterine NK cell activity testing, HLA compatibility assessment with lymphocyte cross match, cytokine evaluation like TNF-alpha estimation and antithyroid antibodies. Now what is the implication of doing the immunological investigations? What it does is it helps to plan the appropriate immunological treatments. At our center, that is Dr. Rao's Center for Reproductive Immunology, we specialize in advanced immunological diagnosis and targeted therapies like Immulet, which have significantly improved the pregnancy outcome in patients who had immune-related infertility. Now, Immulet can be combined with individualized protocols of immunomodulatory medications depending on the reports. And this can help to personalize the IVF treatment. Now, what are the clinical implications of moving towards or thinking about personalized IVF? Now, integrating clinical reproductive immunology into routine IVF practice has the potential to firstly reduce unexplained IVF failures, second to improve live birth rates in patients with RIF and RPL and third it offers precision medicine approaches based on the individual immune profiles. So, the key takeaways from my talk today are first, unexplained IVF failures may have an immunological cause. Many cases of recurrent implantation failure or RIF and recurrent pregnancy loss or RPL are linked to immune dysfunction. But still, immune testing is not a routine part of fertility evaluation. Second, Overactive natural killer cells can prevent implantation. While NK cells play a crucial role, a role in very early pregnancy for implantation, excessive activity or very low activity can lead to embryo rejection. The third is HLA compatibility issues. They can lead to failed implantation. So HLA cross match can uncover this hidden factor in IVF failures. Fourth takeaway is patients with repeated IVF failures or miscarriages should have cytokine evaluation, evaluation to diagnose cytokine imbalance. And the fifth thing is personalized immunological treatment can improve IVF outcomes. Immunotherapies like Immulet can enhance implantation success and increase live birth rates by addressing underlying immune dysfunction. <coughs> so, if you are a patient listening to this video and if you have experienced multiple IVF failures or recurrent pregnancy losses, don't settle for unexplained answers. Seek immune testing to uncover potential causes and explore targeted immune treatments. If you are an IVF specialist or a fertility expert, please consider integrating immune testing into your fertility protocols to enhance the success rates in patients with repeated IVF failures or miscarriages. Collaboration with clinical reproductive immunology experts can help to bridge the gap between reproductive medicine and immune science. Visit www.icprm.in to learn more about immune diagnostics, immune-lead therapy and personalized immunological treatment options. Let's work together to improve IVF success rates and provide better outcomes in couples struggling with infertility. Let's shift the paradigm in IVF treatment by addressing the immune system's role in implantation. Let's bridge this gap between reproductive immunology and IVF 
for better patient outcomes. Please share this video to at least one person who need this and I am sure you will help that couple fulfill the, their dream of having their own baby. Thank you.